Last section we're going, going to get into today is 3D experience plastics. Uh, now, the role for this is called Plastic Injection Engineer, and the app trigram is called IME, or Plastic Injection. Uh, now, the tip here, for those of you who are using or will be migrating to the 3D Experience platform and want to add injection molding analysis capabilities on platform, this is for you. Now, if we were talking about the different SOLIDWORKS plastics versions, this is the slide that we would use, and it helps delineate the analysis capabilities between SOLIDWORKS plastic standard and professional and premium. The plastic injection engineer role encompasses most, if not all, of the features of SOLIDWORKS plastics premium. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is show you what does SOLIDWORKS plastics look like on platform, and if you've seen uh, SOLIDWORKS desktop from start to finish, hopefully you'll be able to, to appreciate some of the differences and obviously similarities between the two. All right, so let's go to platform. All right, so I already have my smoke detector model open here. When we're working with SOLIDWORKS plastics on desktop, we're focused on loading the add-in. But when we deal with SOLIDWORKS plastics on platform, we're actually accessing an app. Right, so I'll just say OK to my physics simulation. And it will take just a moment or two to generate my physics study. Uh, so one of the nice things about working on platform is you have this assistant here. Right, so this is going to walk us through kind of like a Q&A session for setting up our plastic injection molding analysis. All right, so the first thing is I'll go to my contributing parts. And we have to tell this particular uh, project is this the cavity? Is it a hot runner, cold runner? Is it an insert? And so forth. So we'll go ahead and tell it that's the cavity that we're going to fill and click OK. Now when it comes to materials, uh, just like we have our plastics material library in SOLIDWORKS Plastics, we have our material palette, which is on the 3D Experience platform. So instead of steel, let's say I want to find that same plastic resin that I used. So here I'll search for that resin and the very specific resin, I'll make this a little bit bigger, was Turleran GP35. So I want to scroll down. It's not letting me uh, drag that one. There we go. All right, so Turleran GP35. Uh, now, the interesting thing about materials on platform is it is one unified material database. So if I come in here, I have my structural analysis properties, my material properties. I also have my fluid dynamics properties, but I also include my injection molding analysis properties. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click apply. And to apply that material, we just go ahead and click the check mark. All right, so now I'm using Turleran GP35. All right, for process settings, this is going to be similar to what we would do on desktop. So I'll go into my plastics flow simulation. Uh, so if I want to override the fill time, I can do that here. So let's say I wanna fill this in you know, 2.5 seconds. We'll just click okay. Uh, I could also specify an injection pressure, uh, just like I would do on, in like my format. Uh, so 220 megapascal for injection pressure. Uh, but I also would specify what my pack parameters are and my cooling parameters are. So let's say I wanted my pure cooling time to be 17 and three quarter seconds. Um, if I want to adjust the pack pressure profile, we could do that very easily. So we can delete rows, we can add data. Maybe we want the end of our pack stage to be at four and a half seconds. All right, so I'll get rid of or minimize that. Uh, and then this gives us a preview of what the total processing or the total in mold processing time would be. Four and a half seconds of, sorry, two and a half seconds fill, four and a half pack, and 17 and three quarter second cool time. All right, so that's how we would set up our process settings. Now conditions, this is boundary conditions. So the simplest one is injection location. Uh, the default, this X is specifying a vertex on the model. I'm gonna switch this to a face and we'll just select that face right here. And then I'll zoom out a little bit. And at this point, I could just go right into simulate, uh, but I'm gonna do one additional step. I'm gonna go into mesh, all right? So I can do local mesh sizes. Uh, so what this entails is just selecting, you know, faces on a part 
and manually specifying the element size that we want to use. And then once we do that, we can go into the plastic mesh manager, just like we would do on desktop if I wanted to specify the size of the elements. So I was doing that with the slider bar in desktop plastics. Uh, we're just going to choose a size here. We have some additional tools that I'll talk about here in just a moment. All right, and of course, what I would do would be generate the mesh on platform. Click that button, it should start. All right, go back to platform there. There, well, I think I'm going to go back to platform. All right, so we'll click OK. And then at this point, I would click simulate. All right, now I'm not actually going to solve this. It does take about six or seven minutes to, uh, to solve from start to finish. Uh, so let's talk about a couple of differences between SolidWorks Plastics and 3D Experience Platform. Uh, the first is meshing. If I'm really picky about my analysis work, and hopefully that meshing section showed you that I was, uh, I'm going to create the mesh and I'm going to review it before committing to the solve. Now notice the smoke alarm text on the part. On desktop plastics, my workflow would be create a configuration of the part file where I remove the features for this molded in text. If it's a native SOLIDWORKS part, that's probably easy. But a lot of times I receive step files or IGES files and Parasolid files, and I have to clean those up in SOLIDWORKS CAD using surfacing tools to get rid of those tiny features. On platform, the meshing tools has an option to remove small features such as text and logos based upon feature size. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, simulate. Injection molding solves can be very compute intensive. And while I like having access to really high-end workstations, uh, the platform offers both a local and a cloud solve. When you, close, when you choose a cloud solution, uh, you don't get to choose how many cores to use. Um, we do get to see that if we're using some of the structural analysis products on platform, but with 3D Experience Plastics, um, it's not written down, but I assume that it is an eight core cloud solve. Uh, and that's something I'm trying to verify with um, SO Corporation. Uh, desktop SOLIDWORKS Plastics customers will notice a different solve window. We don't get the visualization of seeing the plastic melt front fill the cavity as the analysis progresses. That may or may not be important to you, uh, but we do have a simulation status window uh, that has plots that you can look at. It also has the text data for solve iterations that we currently see in the solve window for SOLIDWORKS Plastics. So I still get to see the solve progress, but I just don't get that you know, in graphics window visualization. Now at the completion of the solve, this is what we're gonna see. Uh, and so instead of the graphics window filling up, you're going to see the fill simulation plots or iterations come to an end. And specifically here, I'm looking at a plot of flow rate versus injection time. So this tapering off is basically when the cavity is nearing the completion of the fill process. All right, so let's take a look at a pre-solved version. So we can uh, get a kind of an understanding of what post-processing looks like on platform. All right, so we don't have the property manager on the left. We have this dialog box right here where I'm choosing my visualization properties. All right, so one of the things I would do when it comes to results, uh, the first thing I might want to take a look at would be the animation itself. All right, so this is like the ISO surface animation that we showed for on desktop. And of course, I can stop and get out of that. When I'm looking at other results, it's as simple as switching to, say, pressure at the end of fill. And of course, I have my results down here in my lower left hand corner from my legend. This is around 31 megapascal. You might remember it was around 38 when I did it on desktop. Um, slight differences in the meshing is really what's going on there. Uh, other outputs that you might be interested in, uh, so similar to SOLIDWORKS Plastics on desktop. Um, this one here, it's called ejection time. This is equivalent to the cooling time estimate plot. Um, same output, just a different name on platform compared to desktop. Uh, you do have the same outputs for visualizing weld lines and also air traps on platform. All right, so a lot of the same output that we see on SOLIDWORKS Plastics desktop is available with 3D Experience Platform Plastics. 
All right, so uh, hopefully you guys are considering that for a long-term solution. Um, some of the other things that are kind of unique um, with 3D Experience Plastics is you have the ability to generate what's called experience content. Uh, that's like generating an e-drawings file for your CAD or generating a report on platform. And by the way, you can also generate reports on platform, but the 3D Experience content, it's a lightweight version of the results that you can share with uh, other engineers for collaboration.